Hello everyone and welcome back to my session on Google Certified Educator Level 1. Today we are covering up a very interesting topic which is uh, the latest version of Google Classroom. Uh, Google Classroom has undergone a lot of changes from the day it was incorporated. Now it is also linked with Google Meet. But the focus today of the exam would be is how do you create new class, add students to the class, create different kinds of assignment, quiz and materials, understand the stream as well as check the grading of assignments. It's the most used app today because of the COVID situation. A lot of teachers, educators are using it today. And I feel for professional learning, uh, you know, workshops also, uh, it's a very preferred uh, format today. So let's jump in. Uh, we go on classroom.google.com. Now, till the page loads up, a very important question what teachers always ask me is, is what should be the ecosystem of the class? Like, should the classes be uh, only grade wise or the classes should be grade wise and subject wise. Now my answer to that question is you cannot have a class just as grade one in a scenario where you have like three, four subjects in grade one. I'm not talking of PYP or, or IGCSC curriculum or in cases where you have a homeroom teacher like one teacher teaching all the subjects in that particular grade. But still, I would not create just one class because all the materials, topics would get mixed up in that class. So a personal advice, what I always feel is if I was a teacher, I would create a class as grade one English. Now I'm giving the name also in the title because uh, even if I select subject here, sometimes it doesn't show me there. So I would, I prefer to create a class name as grade one English. Now, as soon as you do that, the class opens up. The next thing you have to do is click on people to invite students. Okay. Now to invite students, either you would give them this code so that they self invite them. So students need to log in and just enter this code to join the class. But what I would do is I like adding students myself as a teacher so that I know who I am adding. I'll click on invite students and I have an option of inviting them one by one, but my personal suggestion again to all of you would be to add a group directly. Now the advantage of adding a group directly is, is that because you were to create grade one English, grade one math, grade one science, it helps you in not inviting in each of them with individual student names. So you can create a group once and reuse that group everywhere. But make sure you add the students as and when they keep joining your school or your class. So if you are new admissions, then make sure you add the students in grade one and you send them an invite. Now, as soon as you do that, uh, as soon as you do that, so what we'll do is because I have no students in grade one, so I would just for now add students individually And once I do that, the students get invited to the class and they look gray in color to you till they actually log in. So as soon as they log in, they become the students of the class itself. So now when you click on these three lines, uh, the main menu here, when you go on classes, so you have grade one English and just grade one. Out here, let's again go on this plus sign if you wish to show students how do you join the class, you would just tell them that you join the class and give them the class code. 
Now, in this scenario, there can happen, there can be an instance wherein the students give the code to somebody else and they self join them. But you still have the rights uh, of when you click on the class, when you go on people, you could actually delete them from the list itself. So that was the second point. So you created a class, you added students. Now let's see how do you create your course. Now when we go on Classroom, the beauty of Google Classroom is it's so easy that you could learn it in a matter of minutes. So when you click on create, as a teacher, again, I like to create a material first. So, so suppose I am creating a material on digestive system. So I'll give the title. Here are the details on digestive system. I'll click on add because I wish to add a YouTube video. So I would just give like type digestive system here. Again, a very good option because then the student doesn't have to leave the classroom and the data gets embedded in the material itself. And out here, if you carefully see, you have grade one English. If you had one more section here, so you could actually add them to both. So suppose you have grade one A English and then grade one B English again. So you could create, add, add them here itself and you wish to send it to all the students. So right now I'm sending it to all the students and I would make sure that don't forget to add a topic. So I'll create a topic as digestive system itself. Now, as soon as I click on post, it gets live. I could also click on this triangle here and save draft or I can post it also or schedule it also. So I'll just post it. So you see, that's the topic name and that's the material, name, right? Now I could also create the name as watch video on so we write this so that we don't get confused uh, you know, between them. Or you could do a reverse of it, wherein the topic name is digestive system and the title is watch video. That makes no sense. So I have given a video. Now what I want to do is give a small question here. How long is the digestive system? So this can work as a formative question. So I just give multiple choice here. Option as 10 feet. 30 feet. 30 feet. And what I would do is I would assign it to all students. I would give them no grade for the assignment and I will put in a due date as tomorrow. That is 24 hours. And don't forget to click on the topic. Okay. So we can either ask now or we could schedule it for a later date. So just realized, uh, actually we are creating a science topic. So I would just edit and name it as science. Sorry for the folly. So not to confuse, we are in grade one in science now. That's all my classwork. So we created a material. That's video and we added a quiz question. Now that's how the quiz looks like. The next thing we would do is create a quiz assignment. 
So you have four options, material, question, quiz assignment, and normal assignment. So let's see what is a quiz assignment. Now, quiz is actually self-graded. And uh, what happens is it creates automatically a blank, blank quiz for you. So what I would do is I would just give 10 points. I'll give the due date as next week. The topic is digest the system. I could also assign a rubric, I'll create a rubric and assign. Uh, what I would do is now I'll just click on blank quiz. And to save time, uh, give a quiz so and we'll get the same question here so we give 10 feet in a normal scenario you would give different question but right now it's just and out here you will see something new called as answer key click on the answer key if you know the right answer select the right answer obviously you know the right answer and i'll say okay for this question because i feel it's a little difficult i'll give you two points if it's more difficult i'll give three points and if it is not very difficult or easy i'll give one point i could also leave an answer feedback try again correct answer well also lets you add up a YouTube video to your to your incorrect answer so that they again check the video and refresh the memory once that is done we click done then we go to the next question so what I like normally doing is I click on duplicate and this time what I would do is I will make a fill in the blank Same question, we'll put it as short answer. Again, we'll could put question as 30 feet. Okay. And I'll give two right answers because some of them might just write 30, some of them might just write 30 feet. And I'll give the answer points as one. Now, what I'll do is I'll keep these questions as required and I will shut this form. Now, as soon as I do that, you don't worry about the name here. What Google does is as soon as you click on assign, it automatically creates a, it links up with the same quiz what you had created. So you've got a video, you've got a small formatted quiz you've got a swell self-graded quiz which opens in form and the final option here you have is the assignment now assignment is i'm a big fan of it because a lot of schools want to give an online exam which is formative and summative both so you saw formative we got in form of a google quiz with self grades and summative can be something like this Now what I'll do is, in this scenario, I'll click on create docs. And as a teacher, I want all the students to answer the essay in my own format, you know, in a tabular format or in a point wise format. So, first I'll write the essay. So, I'll tell them, okay, that's your title. That's your description comes here. Your essay starts here. And your thoughts are the most important part of 
that is the system. Any other comments? So what I want to do is I want the students to start writing below each of this document. So that's my template. What you could also do is you could also insert a table and tell them to write in this format also. So don't worry, this is just your template. Okay, so once you are done with the template, close it. Now out here, please, very important thing, you click on this drop down, make sure you click make a copy of for each student. So what will happen is if you have 20 students in the class, it'll make 20 copies of that file. It'll add the student name, append it to the file name of that student. So suppose you have student one, the file name will be student one dash digest system. Suppose you have student two, it'll be student two digest system. So suppose I give them 20 points. I give them the due date as next week. Again, don't forget to add the topic and I assign them. Now, once I assign them, what we'll do is now, we'll arrange these properly and we'll sign in as a student. Right now, you're signed in as a teacher. So in this teacher format, this is how it looks like. So what we'll do is first we will put these in the right order. So what I want to do is I want them to watch the video first. I want them to give an answer to a small question, write an essay. So I want them to do a self-graded quiz and write an essay. Okay, so that's how your class looks like. Now I will log in into classroom.google.com as a student. Now, once I'm logged in as a student, you'll see the format as to how it looks for the student and as it looks for the teacher is totally different. You have to also note that the assignments what you have created, each student cannot see each other's assignment. One student can only see his own assignment. He can also get details on when the assignment is due he cannot reject the assignment. There is no way he can refuse the assignment. The assignment due date keeps coming to him as uh, you know reminders. And if he doesn't complete it, he doesn't get the grade for it. So as a teacher, uh, let me so if you see uh, we'll be logging in as a student just to show you how it looks like uh, when he's uh, logging in as a student but you still see each of these has a different icon here so you've got the material you've got how long is the digest system you've got a self-graded quiz and an assignment which is to be submitted so let's see now we log in as student one i select i'm a student and I have to click on join to be part of that class. Now, as soon as I click on join, if you see the student doesn't have the grades link here, right? In the teacher, you have the grades link. We are as a teacher here and that's as a student here. He gets to know, he gets to know all the details on uh, you know the stream, the posting here. He goes on classwork, and out here, if you see, he gets to see the details on the material. So that's material. So when he clicks on it, that's how he gets to view the material details. If he if he goes on the question, he answers it as thirty feet. And he clicks on turned in. Now, as soon as he clicks on turned in, the teacher out here, 
I need to refresh the teacher portal. So when you refresh the teacher portal, the teacher classroom, so you have to understand there are two different logins I have now. So it shows me, okay, one student has turned in and that was his answer. So turned in means answered, right? So that's the self created quiz. So I go on the digester system forms. I write the answer. I submit. I click on view score. So see, I get a right answer here. And it says, okay, the correct answer was so and so. And finally, when I go and write an essay, I click on view assignment. You see, that's the file. It opens up. It's automatically renamed as student one. And here I'll submit it as So I'll give my comments here as a student, as a system, and just make some edit. I don't need to share, uh, save because it's automatically get it getting saved. So. What I need to do is once I finish this, I don't, I have to remember to click on turn in. So turn in means I have submitted the assignment. Okay. And I could also leave a comment. So that goes as a private comment and as a student or as a teacher. I could also post it on the stream. If you see uh, one of the points we had here was understanding the classroom stream. So that's your stream. So any activity you're performing as a teacher comes in here. So I could just post it. So this message goes to all the students. So here again, I am logged in as a student. So it will be going to all the students when they logged in. See, right? Now the final thing here is grades. Now, as I explained to you earlier, that grades is uh, each student cannot see each other student's uh, assignment. That's one thing. Teacher has a liberty of providing the grades after reviewing them student-wise. So all the student names appear here. They also get a list of all the students who have turned in or who have not turned in. So suppose she wants to see the details on the essay, she would just click on this. And then she will click on the student name here, where it shows the file name. And accordingly, it gives you details on about the document the student had submitted. And that way, what you could do is depending on what you feel about it, you could just give the rate rating to the child, a grade to the child. Reply to the student's query. Leave personalized comments. Click on post and make sure you click on return. So basically you're returning the grade to the child and also at your end, when you when you go back uh, to your to your uh, grades, just refresh this page. 
you'll have details of all the grades you have assigned and which are pending for you to grade out here itself. So it shows you, you've already graded here. And this one, because it was self-graded, so you could also click on this. You could just click on import grades here. So it imports the grades. So what will happen is depending on how many right or wrong the student got. So here he gets two points out of three, if you see. Uh, you could get the grades imported here itself. So, so that's great, right? You have an option of creating the course. So ideally you would have different topics created here, like uh, and uh, keep assigning the material for it. You could have unit wise modules, so unit one, then topics below it, or uh, like, you know, material below it. And uh, it allows you four different, uh, you know, kinds of assignments, quiz assignments, question and material you could create. When you go on people, it gives you details on all the people who are live in your classroom. See, if you see, uh, the student one has got uh, enabled here because the student one has joined the class. Now, as soon as the student two joins the class, this will get enabled. When you click on grades, you get details of all the grades for your entire class. When you click on stream, stream is like a conversation you're having with the entire class here, wherein you're discussing with them about different things here, different topics. Uh, you are crea creating reminders there or you're actually generating a Google Meet link also. You could do that. You could also go on Classwork and through Google Calendar generate a Google Meet link also. Or you can go on Google Meet live instantly with the entire class. So that completes our module four classroom. It was a very lengthy topic. Classrooms is one of the most, uh, you know, important aspect of uh, G Suite as of uh, now. Thank you so much. I'll see you in my final session.